Hey guys, so this is Chris again. I am here to do a review on the Western Rattler 357. Um, so it comes in this nice soft carrying case that's well padded on the inside. I've got it hooked up to the, I've got the, the Pro Chrono set up. I, I have the FX uh, radar chronograph, but I think this is a little more reliable with the indoor lights. So it fits in here with a scope. I have a particularly big scope on here. It's the, uh, the Arcan Optics 56, 56 millimeter objective lens. So it's the, uh, this is the EP5, Arcan Optics EP5. But it fits in here and I just have to put one zipper up to each side of the top dial for the uh, elevation. And my bipod is detachable, so I just took it off and put it in here. Honestly, I've only shot the gun maybe three times so far, and I gotta tell you, it's incredibly powerful. It's surprising. I mean, everything I had seen said it was powerful, but when you turn the dial up on this thing, it's not like, I have an FX impact, and that gets a, a crazy amount more power, but this gets like gunpowder gun, powder, gun Power. I mean, it gives you real kickback, real kickback. Not like a NAR15, but <clears throat> it gives you kickback that's good enough to compare to, you know, a 380. Um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna tether it so that because when you turn it when you turn it up, it does use a substantial amount of air. So I brought the tank out, and then I'm going to leave the tablet on, so you guys can actually see how fast how fast it's shooting. But um, the Arcan Optics, I know there's been a lot of hype about these. The hype is all legit. These are awesome scopes. The only reason my my favorite gun is the FX Impact, uh, even though this is more powerful, but this is a bigger slug. But the precision, this is actually very precise as well. Um, it's that just is my favorite gun. I've just done so much work to it, but um, This is a very close second on the scope. So I, I use the The uh, digital scope the ATN X site. I switch that between them when I want to record the, the actual shooting, but This one was the, a very close second to my Vortec which is on the which is on the impact um, so I haven't done modifications at all to this. All I've done is put on the scope and the bipod. That's it. It came with this silencer setup. I, I do have a bigger 357 silencer for my my um, my AEA Terminator, but I haven't put any additional hardware on this gun at all. The only things I did were those two things. That's the case it came with, and I added the air. That's it. The scope, the bipod, and the air. So I'm gonna just show you how it shoots. I've got it turned up a little bit. It's not nearly as high as it can go. This thing can get nearly 300 pounds of energy on the 357 100 grain slug. And these are uh, slugs that I press with the press slug. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'll take a couple shots from here so you can see what kind of numbers I'm getting. And then I'll put the camera down range and let you guys actually see and hear the impact of this thing because it's pretty it's pretty uh, surprising what comes out of this thing that it, it blows that Terminator away. So let's take a couple of shots. And your power adjustment knob is right here. You just let left to, to open the valve more type of thing and right to shut it more. I'm not sure if that's exactly what it's doing, opening the valve or not, but it's definitely adjusting the power dramatically. So whatever it's doing is is not subtle. It's it's not like a one or two foot per second uh, difference like on the impact either. It's it's a pretty big difference. So let's take a couple shots. a little bit all right so that's five clicks you have quite a few clicks in there so that should be pretty substantial <clears throat> 
it's not too bad on here. It's it, but it does it goes through it very quick when you have it on a high setting. I'll open it up even a little more. So the, the numbers are not going up much, but I think I should hook up the other chronograph as well and give you a few shots with that because this doesn't give you the energy. The other one tells you the foot pounds of energy and that goes up a lot. So this, this gun has a tremendous amount of energy coming out of it. I mean, you'll probably see the kick when I'm shooting it. So that's one thing with this gun, when it's too low on air, it won't it won't fire because it's semi-automatic. So it's gotta have a certain amount of air to cycle. So you wanna keep it, you know, like above 150. And it's it says below 250, but I, I put it like 280 or something like that. Uh, just because, you know, it doesn't last that long. And I, I got the 700cc bottle from my impact. I may have to get another one for this. I have two of the 580s. So, you know, and I got the extra valve for it and everything. So I probably, maybe, I, I mean, I, you could just switch it, but it's always nice to have the first bottle, a bigger, a bigger bottle. But uh, let me take a couple more shots. 923. can see the, the kick when I'm when I'm firing but it's it's giving me some serious kickback not right there The only thing that's obviously nobody's favorite with this gun is that it's a fixed magazine. There is no way to take the magazine out. You load it like this. You, there's a lever on this side. You lift it up, and then there's also another gauge on this side. You lift this. You lift this side piece up. See, see, but you lift up the lever, and that'll allow this to come up and the and the uh, magazine to rotate. And then you put a few rounds in. And you can do three at a time. You turn it three rotations or three clicks. And I can actually go forward because I had one in there still. Then you turn it three more, load three more slugs. Or if you want to shoot pellets, this, I'm, I'm sure this would break the sound barrier with pellets. Um, same as, you know, I, I mean, the impact in 22 and 25 caliber breaks the sound barrier even with lighter slugs, but I, I use like 40 grain 22s and 50 grain 25s, so it doesn't break the sound barrier with the, I haven't, I mean, I guess if I tried to turn it up all the way, it might, I, I don't know for sure, but with the power from this gun, I get the feeling that Unless it's a very heavy pellet, it's probably going to break the sound barrier, uh, even on a low setting. Okay, so I will put a couple of fresh targets downrange, and I'll start recording again, and then I'll, I'll shoot it from back here and let you guys see the actual impact and hear it, and maybe get a grasp on how much power this thing's putting out.